Thanks for staying with us. So another interesting story caught our attention. And it's interesting because this is a global debate on abortion. And we'll be finding a way to, you know, talk about this conversation, although it's not a conversation we like to talk about much in Nigeria. But this um, sad death of an 18-year-old girl, lady, who got pregnant as a result of rape and had to commit suicide after her family forced her to keep the child. Now, this story broke um, recently, and it was quite a point of conversation for many people mm. because... Um, being raped in itself is traumatizing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And having to live with the decision of keeping the child or aborting the child is a whole nother level of trauma. Mm. And for this girl that was therefore led to commit suicide brings a whole nother conversation on how do we handle these kind of issues. Mm -hmm. You can call us on the numbers on the screen, 081-270-53687, You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag... Your view TVC so we can read your tweets. Now, we're talking about this also vis a vis our culture, hmm. our religion, our tradition, how we see these things. You know, we can't look at it through the glass of the Western world. We're seeing it through the lives of the glass of we Africans and how we can begin to change our narrative in certain things. What are your thoughts on this? Let me start with Nima. So, this tweet by Lady called Stop Black Femicide said that her 18-year-old cousin took her own life and in the email that she sent to the family, she said she was raped by a family friend that her family had accommodated. And at the time she reported the rape, they just handled it themselves, no report to the police, nothing, no other form of action. They just pushed the young man out of the house after he had committed the act and then kept her locked in. You know, she wanted to seek help and they kept her locked in. She couldn't make the decision of whether to keep the baby or whether to abort was, the baby by was. herself. And it wasn't even if she was to keep it. It wasn't of, an option. It wasn't an informed decision. Yes, they didn't give her that option. So they kept her locked in. And the young girl, after a few uh, a period of time, killed herself. And this brings to me the question of rape, of um, abortion, the rights to abortion. And I, I, somebody almost slapped me. Because, you know, in a job, for me to say that I support the right to abortion by a woman, it didn't make it, it makes sense to that person. I thought, why? You, Muslim woman. But the truth is, as a Muslim woman, I'm very informed about my rules under my religion. And a pregnancy under 40 days that is at the risk or that costs the risk of the life of the mother can be taken out. I think 40 or 120 days, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll confirm the, the quickly now from my books. But... Is allowed in Islam. And in this kind of case, when a woman is not psychologically prepared, somebody who has gone through rape, why are we debating whether she should keep the baby? Medically also, they have procedures. I know Mirabel Center does something, which they did for one of my cases. Immediately, the lady suffered a rape, and the mother, we thankfully, if I say what Mirabel will kill me for, took the girl to Mirabel Center. They gave her some pills to prevent pregnancy, they put her on a one month or so period a drug, I think one month or three months period a drug to prevent HIV. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of issues around these kind of things that will start to get sentimental and unnecessarily religious about. Mm -hmm. The religion that you don't have information about, how do you even use it as a basis and say it's not good to take a life? It's not about the life that has not yet gotten a, a spirit. It is the life of the person that is alive, the body. A damaged person like that cannot even nurture it's that baby. Really so you, it needs to be her decision to say, I want to keep this baby, I would love the baby despite whatever, exactly. than to but keep see, the baby and there's you know, a religious the baby angle that. that thou shalt not kill, right? And there's this angle of it has happened, all things work together for good. Mm. People mm. believe that, okay, it has happened, there's nothing that's happened under the sun that God doesn't know. You know, they would encourage the child, keep the child. You're 18, you know, God will bless the child, you know. That's, that, that's the religious angle I, I see. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, is this a narrative we continue to push, or do we leave it to the decision of the woman? So, um, I don't see... I, I hear that religious angle, and I think that our religion can be... We, our religion, most religious people play hostage to the situation on ground. We just dodge. God, we do it. God did it. God can handle it. God is in charge. God did it. God is... Like, we just put everything on God's table without realizing that we are on earth, we are a physical manifestation of God, and we have decisions to take that would affect people's lives. Mm -hmm. So, um, a dam 
somebody who is going through mental trauma. challenge, mm -hmm. mental trauma that hasn't been dealt with, feeling damaged, is left to deal with the repercussion of something that happened to her. Mm. And her life is paused for, her, for that decision. And she's not being treated for the mental issues she's dealing with. Mm. Isolation itself can lead to suicide. Mm -hmm. People commit suicide based on isolation. You lock somebody up without any, like she's not even going through um, therapy. therapy, just being isolated. A sane, hale and healthy person can have suicidal thoughts by being alone, number one. Pregnancy alone with the hormonal imbalance can lead Hello. to a lot of emotional, mental health challenges. Then having mental um, pregnancy combined with isolation for someone who went through rape. Three. Three issues that I, I felt Serious were not properly issues. managed. I feel we should be blaming the entire caregivers for mismanaging a very, a very, mm. very crucial situation mm. that mm. could have taken another way. Now for the religious part. Um, congratulations to Dr. Um, Helen Paul and her husband. Mm -hmm. um, Helen Paul has not hidden her story that she's a product of rape and she grew up with her grandmother. And she says it over and over again that she, she's a professor is, now. Yes, yes professor. professor. And it, it's, it, it's the stories of her life that has pushed her into understanding that she's not a negative. Mm. She's not a she's not she's, she's not an anomaly. Mm. She's not a mystic. And I'll tell you, Professor Henry Paul is not a mystic. She's impacted this world, even though her, what, what brought about her mm. had a little negativity. So I understand that products of rape can turn out to be amazing, phenomenal human being. But in the process of nurturing that pregnancy to maturity, there must be a lot of emotional intelligence mm. and psychological help mm. for the entire people involved. Ma'am, this mm. is an 18-year-old. Mm. People abroad will say she's an adult. Mm -hmm. Make a decision. Why yeah. is family so involved in this? Mm. Yeah. I think our own story has to... We need to think back on our... There used to be a time when a girl was raped, she was forced to marry her rapist. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, Nobody yeah. thought about her mental health. Nobody thought that she may hate this person that mm. violated her and now she'll be made to live with that person. Stay tuned. Your View will be right back.